we're back with the ARP 2600. Uh, I probably have one or two more of these. Uh, so if you want me to answer any specific questions, please let me know because I'm going to end this probably in one or two more videos. Um, so if I didn't cover something or you want to know something, please leave a comment. So we're going to start. I'm calling this video Advanced Ring Modulation. Um, this is really ring modulation plus adding some of the ideas we've been talking about along the way. Uh, so we're going to start with just a basic arpeggio here. Uh, let me see what I can pull up here. Okay, so I've got the two oscillators, one and two, tuned in unison. Uh, and they're just doing this five note pattern. Okay, I'm a big believer in five note patterns because it's a Buchla thing. Um, something about that number is sort of magical for getting people to get out of their expectations, I guess. And so this is what's coming out of the ring mod right now. So there's not a lot happening <laughs> um, because the oscillators are tuned in unison. But it does have this nice, like, magical thing kind of sound going on. Especially once you add reverb. And if we switch it from audio to DC, you get more of like a harp type of sound um, because it's mixing the voltages as opposed to the audio range. Okay? So, the next thought is okay, well, we've got this like unison line using ring modulation, which sort of isn't the point um, because ring modulation, we want those sidebands and these kind of bell-like textures that happen. Uh, so the first thing I'm going to do is take the trigger out. Um, I'm using the keyboard. The keyboard's running this arpeggio. Uh, arpeggio. So uh, I'm going to take the trigger out of the keyboard and use it to the external clock in. Um, what this does is puts the sample in hold in time with each note. Um, so then what happens is it's already hardwired. On oscillator one, we've got sample and hold hardwired uh, to uh, do frequency modulation. So what that's going to do is, you know, oscillator two is going to stay here doing that pattern. But oscillator one is going to be changing pitch sort of randomly, and we actually have control over that with the noise generator, how big of a range of random pitches we can get, and we've got an attenuator here to sort of further dial it in. Uh, so let's hear what happens when we do that. So unison, if I take the sample and hold, now we've got all those nice metallic sounds. Now, if you remember from the uh, sample and hold and noise generator discussion, this slider here, the white, pink, and low frequency range on the noise generator affects what pitches are coming out of the sample and hold. So we can sort of like turn it down <laughs> to this like slower change. And as we go towards white, we get bigger and bigger pitch ranges. Turn the reverb down a little. Okay, so then we've also got sample and hold hardwired to uh, oscillator 2. So if this uh, attenuator is not at the same level as this, we're going to get even more mayhem. As they get closer, they get back in unison. Okay, so we've gone from... Oops. <laughs> Alright. So now we're like pretty far from the original. You can actually turn up these uh, two inputs here to hear what pitches are coming out of those oscillators. <laughs> So then let's take this another step. Um, 
we discussed this in a previous video, um, I think not that long ago, actually, uh, when we were talking about guitar um, using the filter gate. So I'm going to take the sample and hold out and replace uh, the ADSR input here. It uh, doesn't really matter. You can go into either one of these. And what's going to happen is the sample and hold is going to affect filter frequency. So we'll start here. I'm going to just use, uh, you know, oscillator 1 is the one being frequency modulated, 2 is staying stable. And we'll turn down the filter, and then we'll turn up the modulation. And give it some resonance. And now we've got like this really interesting steel drum type of thing happening, or just, it's like a metallic percussion. And as always, you can sort of attenuate this to taste. And then if you want to add one more level, we can just put a dummy plug into oscillator 2. Alright, so now there's no pitch coming out of oscillator 2 except whatever this slider is set to. So the only thing you're hearing is static pitch here and oscillator 1 being modulated by sample and hold. So there's oscillator 2, nothing happening. Oscillator 1 going crazy and with them together. And then we can go even further and get into, you know, if I move this frequency, we can change the sounds that are happening. Okay, so some of these sounds are more useful than others, um, but it's more a matter of exploring what can happen here. You know, you've also got uh, ADSR envelope to mess with. Um, so a lot of changes can be affected there. Um, so a lot to think about. Hope that helps.